Okay, um, so hello, my name is Neve, and I am speaking from uh, Dublin in Ireland, um, from University College Dublin, and I'm going to talk a little bit about a microscope that I've built. So I built this microscope because I'm interested in microplastic pollution and measuring microplastics in the sea. And the thing about marine microplastic pollution is that it's a global problem and therefore requires globalizable solutions. So the current approaches involve techniques uh, that are either really expensive or they require a lot of manual labor and specialist training. So what if we could just make a new tool for measuring microplastics that could improve on current methods? So let's make a tool. So if we're going to make our own tool to measure microplastics, it should be as low cost as possible so that more researchers can have access to it. And if we're going to make it low cost, it doesn't just benefit researchers. It will also uh, benefit, it means that more community groups, environmental groups, and citizen scientists can also make our tool. Um, so how do you get a tool like this into the hands of community groups? You need to make it open source and make the instructions to build the tool available to anybody. Um, and that's why I'm here. So uh, making it open source and involving the public not only benefits the public and gets them kind of empowered to answer their own scientific questions, but it also benefits science uh, because microplastic pollution is a global problem, like we said, so we need all hands on deck to solve it. And then to improve on current methods, we should also try and make this tool uh, as easy and efficient to use in terms of time. Um, so we're going to see if we can build something that will just scan over our samples and tell us how much plastic is in it. So we're going to build a tool. What do we need? So usually when you're measuring microplastics, you'll label them with a fluorescent dye called Nile Red, and that just helps us to be able to see the plastics better because they're very small. So we're going to need a fluorescence microscope to be able to see them. And then we said we wanted to have something that would scan over our samples, so we're going to need a motion system. So for a motion system, where are we going to get that from? Um, we do a lot of 3D printing in our lab, and as you can see, 3D printers have great motion systems. You can also get a reliable 3D printer for about 200 quid nowadays. It's called an Ender. Um, so can we just stick a microscope on our Ender 3D printer and use that to scan over our sample? Uh, and the answer is no, not like this. Anyways, if, we, if we're going to do this, we need to simplify a microscope down into its simplest form and just completely rethink what a microscope looks like. So what is the simplest that we can make fluorescence microscopy? So fluorescence actually, here's a schematic of what fluorescence is, and it looks really complicated, but it's actually really simple. So fluorescence is where you shine light of a certain color onto a sample and you measure a different color coming back off the sample. And really, if you want to do fluorescence microscopy, you only need four things. So you're going to need an objective lens. So we can just use this uh, cheap objective lens you can get on Amazon for like nine quid. We're going to use, uh, we need an illumination source to excite our Nile Red and make it fluoresce. And we're going to use these cheap LEDs that you can get in electronics kits for kids. We're going to need uh, a filter, an emission filter. And instead of using the tradition, traditional emission filters that you get in a traditional fluorescence microscopes, we're going to use lighting gels, which are thin pieces of plastic that are commonly used in the entertainment industry or in photography to uh, change the color output of a light. Uh, you can get these on AliExpress for really cheap as well. And as you can see, it does a really good job of blocking out that green excitation light. And then we need a camera to collect our images. So we're going to use a cheap and open source Raspberry Pi camera with a Raspberry Pi computer. And then we're just going to 3D print all the other bits. So now we have a super simple fluorescence microscope that we can just stick onto our 3D printer and we have the endoscope. And the best thing about this is that you, you keep the 3D printer intact so you can still have your 3D printer. We've designed a tool that allows you to swap back and forth between 3D printer and microscope really easily. Um, so why is that a big deal? Um, and that's because we built this tool not just for us, we built it for other people to, to build um, because we want as many people to measure microplastics as possible. So we need to reduce the barrier to entry for people to do that. Um, so if you have a 3D printer lying around at home, like a lot of people do, that's great. You can use your 3D printer to print the parts that you need for the microscope. If you don't have a 3D printer at home, still great because then you basically get two tools in one. You get a 3D printer and a microscope and you don't have to sacrifice one for the other. 
so financially we can reduce barriers for people uh, who want to reproduce this. But we also need to simplify the design and that's something that we're a little bit less good at. So that brings me to my final point, which is one of our most important points. Um, and that's sometimes we are idiots and we have a tendency to overcomplicate things. Um, um, we try and design things and we just end up making them much more complicated than they need to be. Um, to give an example of this, uh, last year we were working with a beach cleaning charity to design a microplastic sampler that we could throw into the sea and collect microplastics. Um, and they're experts at this. They know what it's like to work down at the sea. They know what it's like to involve people in uh, marine science. They're, they do this all the time. They host workshops. Um, so what we came up with in our lab was this 3D printed microplastic sampler that we thought was fantastic. What they came up with was much better. And this is a Pringles can on a stick with a tea bag at the end of it. And that's much better than our design because it's simple and people can actually, anybody can do this. Um, so what this showed us is how important it is if you're designing a tool for someone else, for a, a, the other user, you need to make sure that you involve them in the discussion of designing the tool. Um, it also shows us that sometimes the simplest solution is the best. So, yeah, so we tried to kind of apply this principle to the rest of uh, the process of designing the endoscope. And we've been constantly refining our, uh, our designs to make them as simple as possible. So we started out really complicated um, and we've whittled it down to its simplest form where it still works. But is it simple enough? And to answer that question, the only way to know is to go out and ask people. So that's what we've been doing. We've taken the endoscope on a day out to the Dublin Maker Festival, which is a festival in Dublin. It's like a show and tell where makers of any kind go out and show that their stuff to the, the public. And um, we brought it, we got feedback and it was great. And we got some, we let people play with it for a few minutes. But what if you let them play with it for longer? What if it's not a few minutes? What if you give people an endoscope to keep forever and you go and you check in in a few months and you see, what did you do with it? What were the problems with it? Um, what did you look with it, look at with it? Uh, and that's what we're going to do. So we've got funding from the Experiment Foundation um, to build a couple of endoscopes and give them to um, libraries, community groups, and maker spaces around Ireland and check back in and see what they do with them. Um, so we can't get funding to make thousands and thousands of these and hand them to people, but what we can do is empower people to build it themselves. And we can give them the tool that's as efficient as we could possibly make it, as easy to build as we could possibly make it. And we can give them something that was co-developed by the community for the community. And that's when something we get to do something really interesting and we can start tackling these global problems like microplastic pollution.